Alright, okay, you're probably wondering why I'm wearing my dressing gown. It is because today, I'm here to review a cosy mystery. I guess you could call it cosy. I don't know, it's Agatha Christie, so she's pretty cosy, right? So I'm going to review a Caribbean mystery by Agatha Christie. Let me just quickly read the blurb. So, uh, by the way, this is a Marple book. This is Marple book number 10. It says here, a Caribbean mystery. As Jane Marple sat basking in the Caribbean sunshine, she felt mildly discontented with life. True, the warmth eased her rheumatism, but here in paradise nothing ever happened. Eventually, her interest was aroused by an old soldier's yarn about a strange coincidence. Infuriatingly, just as he was about to show her an astonishing photograph, the Major's attention wondered. He never did finish the story. So, first off, I guess one of the points to make is this is one of the few Marple books, or Agatha Christie books in general, I guess, that... Actually, I say few. I, qu I think quite a few of them take, take place away from, you know, the small British towns. But you usually think of Miss Marple, you think of where she lives, and I've f fucking forgotten what it is now. St Mary Mead. That's the According one. To Wikipedia, Thank you. Okay, Ms. Google. Marple is an elderly spinster who lives in the village of St Mary Mead and acts as an amateur consulting detective. Thank you. However, in this one, as you can tell from the title, they are in the Caribbean. I'm going to read a few of my little highlights from it as well. I mean, Christie's great. I always love reading Christie. I actually specifically picked this up because I, I just read the, uh, the Ursula K. Le Guin book, uh, Fisherman of the Inland Sea, and I didn't like it much. So I wanted to read something that I knew I would enjoy. Rural life was far from idyllic. People like Raymond were so ignorant. In the course of her duties in a country parish, Jane Marple had acquired quite a comprehensive knowledge of the facts of rural life. She had no urge to talk about them, far less to write about them, but she knew them. Plenty of sex, natural and unnatural, rape, incest, perversion of all kinds. Some kinds, indeed, that even the clever young men from Oxford who wrote books didn't seem to have heard about. So she's having this chat and he says, uh, this dude, she's talking to Raymond West, a successful novelist. And uh, he paused, slightly embarrassed. But surely even dear old Aunt Jane must have heard of queers. It's quite sweet though. Like, there's no malice meant in any of, like... Like, it, she calls... She, uh, Agatha Christie, she describes um, uh, Miss Marple as, um, like, a nice old pussy. That's it. She's, <laughs> she's like, she's a nice old pussy. And you're like, Jesus Christ. She does use the word horrid as well. Which... Uh, I'm not a fan of one of the characters says the word horrid. I'm always like just just say horrible, but um, <laughs> and so basically this this dude dies uh, right at the start, so it's not a spoiler, you know. And um, and <laughs> and and this uh, this this younger girl goes. Of course, he was quite old. He seemed quite well and cheerful yesterday," said Miss Marple, slightly resenting this calm assumption that everyone of advanced years was liable to die at any minute. <laughs> hey Google, when was Agatha Christie born? Agatha Christie was born on the 15th of September 1890. So by the time this book was released, she was 74, so she was writing from experience there as well. And you have Miss Marple, she she meets a, a dude, he's like the doctor, and, and she has to lie to him basically to try and, to try and get some information. And she, It's quite telling of her character that she thinks this, so a very nice man, thought Miss Marple to herself. And I really feel rather ashamed of having to tell him lies, but I don't quite see what else I can do. And actually, she later confesses to him that she told him this lie as well, which I think is really, like, it is very telling of her character and very sweet. Some great dialogue here as well between uh, Miss Marple and this doctor. He's called Dr. Graham. So, how wonderful science is nowadays, said Miss Marple. Doctors can do so much, can't they? We all have one great competitor, said Dr. Graham. Nature, you know. And some of the good old-fashioned home remedies come back from time to time. Like putting cobwebs on a cut, said Miss Marple. We always used to do that when I was a child. Very sensible, said Dr. Graham. And a linseed poultice on the chest and rubbing in camphorated oil for a bad cough. I see you know it all, said Dr. Graham laughing. It's really weird how that sentence is written, actually. There should be a comma between Dr. Graham and laughing, surely, but no. Chapter 6 here is called In the Small Hours, and I just want to read you the opening paragraph of this chapter, because I think it's a great, it's fantastic opening uh, chapter for a paragraph. Miss Marple woke early. Like many old people, she slept lightly and had periods of wakefulness which she used for the planning of some action or actions to be carried out on the next or following days. Usually, of course, these were of a wholly private or domestic nature, of little interest to anybody but herself. But this 
next morning, Miss Marple lay thinking soberly and constructively of murder, and what, if her suspicions were correct, she could do about it. It wasn't going to be easy. She had one weapon and one weapon only, and that was conversation. Which is, conversation is her superpower, I think. Here we go, here's, here's a nice old pussy. Right, so this thing with the nice old pussy, it's just because she repeatedly calls Miss Marple a nice old pussy, and clearly, I think at the time it meant a pussycat. I don't know so much about now, but anyway, the, the paragraph. <laughs> Miss Marple was also present. As usual, she sat and knitted and listened to what went on and very occasionally joined in the conversation. When she did so, everyone was surprised because they had usually forgotten that she was there. Evelyn Hillingdon looked at her indulgently and thought that she was a nice old pussy. What's interesting as well is we get a lot of like... Obviously, as this is set in the Caribbean, but they are still mostly kind of expats and travellers and married couples and stuff. So throughout the book, we get a few discussions as to why people actually move out to these locations. So for example, here, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read the start of this. This is chapter 8 here. So, This place isn't what it used to be, said Mr. Raphael irritably, as he observed Miss Marple approaching the spot where he and his secretary were sitting. Can't move a step without some old hen getting under your feet. What do old ladies want to come to the West Indies for? Where do you suggest they should go? asked Esther Walters. To Cheltenham, said Mr. Raphael promptly. Or Bournemouth, he offered. Or Torquay, or Landrindod. Well, I don't even know what that is. We have a very odd saying here, so uh, I'll bet Lucky uttered an irritated ejaculation and hurried on. She did what now? Jesus. Sounds painful. We should get that checked out. We get lots of twists and turns throughout, as you would imagine, for a Christie crime novel. I mean, I think what's interesting about this in many ways is the setting of, of it being in the Caribbean. The murder itself... I don't know. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't say that I saw it coming, but I did not see it coming either. I actually didn't even bother to try and predict what was going to happen. I just enjoyed it for what it was. And I think that's probably the best way to do it with books like these. Tim's coming up the stairs. His face was ghastly. Evelyn looked up at him, raising her eyebrows in a query. It's one of our girls, he said. What's her name? Victoria. Somebody's put a knife in her. And I think it's quite telling of him that but one of his servants has just been stabbed. And he's like, oh, what's, it, what's her name? Victoria. We get some more Mr. Raphael here. And I think we get to see here how greetings have evolved and changed. So, hi called Mr. Raphael impatiently. He added, You there! Miss Marple had not at first realised that Mr. Raphael's Hi You was addressed to her. It was not a method that anyone had ever used before to summon her. It was certainly not a gentlemanly mode of address. I would say that Hi is fairly considered fairly gentlemanly now. It's better than like Yo or like Sup. So Miss Marple and Mr. Raphael are talking and, and uh he says, you've got a nerve, he said. Not quite the gentle, fluffy old lady you look, are you? So you really think I'm a murderer? No, said Miss Marple. I do not. And why? Well, really, I think just because you've got brains. Having brains, you can get most things you want without having recourse to murder. Murder is stupid. Which I think is a great quote. I don't know whether this, I don't know how accurate this is or not, but it's certainly an interesting quote that I highlighted upon. So, uh, and this is Miss Marple again. She says, uh, It's young people who commit suicide easily, out of despair from love, sometimes from sheer anxiety and worry. But old people know how valuable life is and how interesting. And then Mr. Raphael, of course, he goes, Ha! We have another old pussy here. Esther Waters looks slightly startled. She turned her head towards Miss Marple. I've been wrong about her, said Mr. Raphael, with characteristic frankness. Never been much of a one for the old pussies. All knitting wool and tittle-tattle. But this one's got something, eyes and ears, and she uses them. I think some great characterization of Miss Marple here, and that kind of shows that she's getting old as well. So uh, it says, uh, then, slightly confused, she sat upright again in a chair. She had dozed off. An incredible thing to do, because the steel band was playing, and anyone who could doze off during the steel band... Well, it showed, thought Miss Marple, that she was getting used to this place. We have this bit here where I actually made an incorrect prediction. It's just because it says here, Miss Marple smiled at him and said that that was good hearing. She found it, however, quite an effort to smile. Decidedly, she was tired. She got up and walked slowly back to her bungalow. She would have liked to go on thinking, puzzling, trying to remember, trying to assemble various facts and words and glances, but she wasn't able to do it. The tired mind rebelled. It said, sleep, you've got to go to sleep. And I thought at this point that maybe she'd been doped by somebody, but apparently not. There was no, like, sign that that had happened. <laughs> we might have a record here for the weirdest 
weirdest couple of sentences out of context from this entire book. All right, you ready? I'm just going to read these two sentences and then we're going to move on. <laughs> I'm so immature sometimes. Miss Marple gave a sudden ejaculation. She bent down, peering, then stretched out her hand and touched the golden head. Oh, and then the next page, Evelyn gives a sharp ejaculation as well. And then we get to the end, and I'm not going to tell you how it ends up. There are a lot of, um, a lot of twists and turns here, because it basically, the story starts out with the implication that this major has potentially been murdered to, um, to keep him quiet about something. And then we start investigating that, but then other people start dying as well. And then we kind of discover... It's the basic setup, really, where the guy threatens to reveal the old secret. And then that starts off a series of new murders. And so you have the old case and the new case kind of tying in together. But yeah, it was still a lot of fun. I mean, it's Agatha Christie. I love Agatha Christie. Miss Marple as well. I mean, I quite like Miss Marple. Probably as much as I like Poirot. I know a lot of people just prefer Poirot, but I'm down with both. Near the end of the set as well, and uh, we also had a few mentions, a few like mentions in this of um, Miss Marple being Nemesis, as in like the Greek figure. But I happen to know there is a book called Nemesis. I've actually read Sleeping Murder and Miss Marple's Final Cases as well, which come after this. But uh, I haven't read Nemesis yet, and I do have it on my shelf, so I'm looking forward. I might even pick that up next and see if. It ties in with this, and if so, how it does so. So yeah, rating time, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Very solid, enjoyable book. Yeah, good stuff. So anyway, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Leave a comment to let me know if you've read any Agatha Christie, whether you've read any Marple, and indeed whether you've read this book. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more bookish videos, and I will see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.